In today's video, we're going to be doing an Arsenal career mode. If you guys can hit that like button and that subscribe button, it will mean the world to me. And yeah, we're going to be doing an Arsenal career mode. Pretty much how it is, we're going to be rebuilding Arsenal. We're giving ourselves half a billion dollars to see if we can beat Arsenal's record of the Invi Invincibles. And yeah, this is how the Arsenal team looks like now. And as you can see, guys, they don't have a single defender that's... 80, 82 rated or 83 rated. So that's actually really, really tough, to be honest. But yeah, they have Odegaard, they have Jesus, and they have all them good stuff. And they got Gabriel Montanelli. And yeah, I feel like it's time that this Arsenal team needs a change. And what better way to, to do that than in this career mode, to be honest. So like I said, half, half, a, half a billion dollars. That's how the team looks. And let's just get right into it, to be honest. I think this Arsenal team should be really, really amazing. And obviously, call quality players like Jesus and Odegaard. And we're going to have to get a, nine, a better goalkeeper. I feel like we can do some magic here, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls. People of all ages. And yeah. Let's just see how we do against this Arsenal team. And just try to do the, just try to do the best that we can. Obviously, Arsenal are doing good in real life under Mikel Arteta. But in my opinion, I feel like the first signing, the most of the money we're going to be investing is in the back line. And I think why not bring a world-class center back and a world-class player like Virgil van Dijk. He's 30 years old, but he'll go up to 90, maybe 91. We'll offer 90 to see what they say. They counted 128. Oh, we'll have to counter with, I want to say 180, see what they say. They'll say 113. I, w I want to go lower. I want to say as much, as much money as possible. We counter with 110. We're just going to submit the 113 million offer. And we just got ourselves Virgil van Dijk. A world-class player, a world-class midfielder. And why not, to be honest? Why not? Virgil van Dijk, he's, he has the height. And obviously, he isn't what he used to be in his prime. But yeah, he has the height, and I think it will be a world-class signing, despite Arsenal doesn't have a single defender that's 82 rated. And we just got Virgil van Dijk, ladies and gentlemen, to Arsenal. Obviously, this move is super unrealistic, because Virgil van Dijk will never join Arsenal. And yeah, we'll just put him for Saliba right there. That's our first signing of that more we have. And let's just go right back into it. And I'm thinking about a person who has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of quality and the goalkeeper, like Jan Oblak. And he's probably one of the best in the world. He certainly is one of the best in the world. And yeah, we're just going to trust straight off for 90 million. They accept it straight away. And Virgil van Dijk, not Jan Oblak. Amazing. Simply just amazing. We're going to negotiate his wages here for the contract. Three years. I think three years is more than enough. And yeah, from literally 500,000, 600,000, 600 million, we're up to 390. So that, that should be pretty fun and easy. 90 million for a goalkeeper like Jan Oblak. And yeah, let's put him, let's put him straight into the lineup. And we went from 82 to 89 real quick. And yeah, this pretty, pretty much the rebuild should be fun. And yeah, pretty much the purpose of this challenge, guys, is simply if we can beat Arsenal invincible record back in 2004 to see if we can go undefeated in the Premier League. We have already two quality players, and to do that, you're going to need quality players. And I think the next person I think will be world class is a center back like Antonio Rudiger, the German center back. And yeah, let's just negotiate it. 75 million. Let's put an offer like around 80. See what they say. They want 93 to 5% selling clause. We'll counter with, oh, let's say 85 and some minutes. See what they say. They're willing to go for it. 85 million, 5% selling clause. I think it's a decent deal. But we literally paid 10 million more than what his current value is. And he's an 87 rated goal and center back. So. I feel like this could definitely fix Arsenal's defense for sure. And I, like I said, guys, the majority of of the money is really going to go to the back line. 
It's an A. Wow. Impressive. So Gabriel out. Rudiger in. And there you go. Now what we got to do is the fullback. And maybe a winger. And maybe another defensive midfielder. And why not bring a player in a right back like Danny Carvalho? He's going to cost us 30, 30, 40 million. He's 84 rated. He's not world class, but he should be better than Ben White. Let's pay 34 million. See what they say. They want Gabriel J. Susan and, and we're just going to give it to him to be on. 3 million. Gabriel J. Susan. Why not? Why not? And it should be good, ladies and gentlemen. It should be amazing in this amazing series. Let's negotiate the contract length. And it should be amazing. There you go, Danny Carvajal. To Arsenal, like I said, another unrealistic move. Danny Carvajal would never ever join Arsenal. We got we we, we literally gave them a center back that has like room to grow by by Gabriel. But yeah. I feel like I should have just wasted the other 47 million, maybe like on a better striker. But yeah, we're gonna buy a left back like Dale Hernandez, invest that extra money on it. Dale Hernandez, a French left back like him, and let's just see what happens. So we're gonna give him Karen Trini, who's valued at 34 million, and we're just gonna chuck in 50, 60 million there, see what happens, guys. They want a 10% sell on clause. Get, get away from that sell on clause. Just take the money. Yeah, that's too much. 60 million. You're getting yourself a 35 value, 35 million value left back. And you also want a 10% sell on clause. That's just too much. Just just just, just take the money. So four thousand dollars. I mean four year contract length. And yeah, it should be kind of decent. And yeah, 60 million Karen Trini, and it should be decent. That's definitely a big impact from 79 to 84, one up six ratings. And that's pretty much our back line. We just need to focus on a defensive midfielder and maybe a winger. And we should be sorted. We should be sorted here, guys. And I think what better way to do it than the, the sign of the offensive midfield like Condra Lamar. I think he's not a world class, but he definitely will do the spot there from Austria. He'll cost you around forty million, so let's just pay and get out of the way. We have an extra one hundred sixty-eight to spend, and there you go. Like I said, um, not a world class defensive midfielder, but. He should be good enough to, to fill that spot. Because I really want to invest the rest of the money on a world-class left winger. And I have two world-class left winger of mine by the name of Sadio Mane. Maybe even Neymar. I, I, might, might, I might end up just getting Neymar just because Neymar just has a little bit better shooting than Sadio Mane. Even though Sadio Mane possessed that pace that we all like about him. But yeah. Sadio Mane, 30 years old, center forward, left mid also. I didn't know that's that they, the team that they changed Sadio Mane to like a center forward. Either way, I feel like this is these two deals that we're just gonna put on the transfer hub are gonna be are gonna be world class. Neymar and Sadio Mane, like I said, I feel like I would choose Neymar just because of his shooting just a little bit more. And yeah. A hundred and one million. We're gonna just give them a hundred million. They want 117. We're just gonna pay it. We have the money just to get it out of the way. And yeah, we got ourselves the ex Barcelona and now ex PSG player Neymar, who's world class, 30 years old. Time flies, man. Time flies. 200 million, 200,000. And yep, 200,000 is what we're going to play for the amazing, amazing Neymar. PSG, Arsenal, Neymar. Let's get it done.
and there you go guys that's pretty much the team the team is pretty much set now let's just dive right into the whole simulation thing and see if we won the Premier League undefeated there you go guys we're officially into the season and we ended in fifth place that's tough 22 wins 10 draws six losses so pretty much we literally spent half a billion dollars and we ended up losing that much we ended up knocked out in round five again the penalties against west ham united in the fa cup and in the cabro cup we lost against everton in the semi-finals that is really harsh and really tough in the Europa League, let's see how we did. Maybe when we won. No, it's UA and Manchester City. How did Manchester City end up in the Europa League? But either way, Arsenal, we ended up losing the quarterfinal. Thank you all so much. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like. Hit the notification. That's how the table looks. Thank you all.